Good evening. As the world unites in mourning the death of Nelson Mandela, here in the Midlands, people have been paying their own tributes to South Africa's first black president. Although his last visit here was 20 years ago, its impact has left a lasting legacy. In a moment, I'll be speaking to someone who met and was influenced by him. But first, here's Bob Hockenhall. <laughs> The name of Nelson Mandela will be forever etched on the hearts of these children. Their school in Sparkbrook in Birmingham is named after him. 20 years ago, Mr Mandela was guest of honour here. He actually came into my classroom, shook my hand and made the effort to speak to the children, which they really appreciated and so did I. At a special assembly today, the latest generation celebrated the values of respect and responsibility inspired by a world leader. I know he died yesterday right now, but, he's, uh, but I think he's still here with us in the assembly. I feel really proud and when I learn about him it's so inspiring and I feel like I feel like he's unique and this school is unique to be named after such an amazing man. When Nelson Mandela came, he, he left a picture, a photograph of himself, and he'd written on it to my school in Birmingham. He recognised that this school was special to him as much as he's special to us, so really fantastic. You are my brothers and sisters. You are my children. You are my grandchildren. And Birmingham is my home, a sweet home. Thank you. Nelson Mandela invited the people of Birmingham to become part of his extended family. Tony Kennedy, a dedicated anti-apartheid campaigner, needed little persuading. He was instrumental in getting the school named and also called one of his twin daughters after the leader. We walked through the doors and came straight to us. We were with our mum and dad behind us and he knelt down and spoke to us and gave us a cuddle. and asked us what our names were, so I obviously told him that I was named after him, and he gave us a kiss on the cheek each. Nelson Mandela also visited Hansworth. Philip Murphy, a city councillor, arranged the visit. He came to Hansworth just because we said local people would like to see him, a man who was so busy, full of schedule. That sense of gratitude is something which I feel most leaders haven't got. Former Midlanders who worked in South Africa and met Nelson Mandela also fondly remembered him today. Alan Bradley from Malvern cooked for Mr Mandela on a number of occasions. Phone call one day asking me if I could do a VIP party at a house out in Santon and uh, they wouldn't tell us who the VIP was but when they said there couldn't be broccoli on the menu I knew it was Mr Mandela. And while on an internal flight in South Africa, David Baker from Stourbridge unexpectedly found himself sitting next to Mr Mandela and spent three hours chatting with him. The man was compassionate, full of grace, um, probably the greatest person that I've ever, ever met. Um, he was just basically um, almost like a saint. Flags were at half-mast across the Midlands today, but as well as sadness, there was also pride that the great leader made such a memorable visit to this region. Bob Hockenall, BBC Midlands Today. Well, huge crowds turned out to see Nelson Mandela to, when he visited Birmingham in 1993. Just months before he became the first black president of South Africa, he met with civic leaders, communities and school children. One of those he met was Shane Ward, who saw him speak brilliant, in Hansworth. Brilliant, The best thing that could ever happen to black people in this country is Mandela coming here and thanking us for all the support that we've given him. And Shane is now the chief executive of the West Bromwich African Caribbean Resource Centre and he's with me now. Good, Good evening. evening. First of all, I have to say, it's a fabulous shirt. It's a tribute to Mandela. He liked his, his colourful shirt. He certainly did. What yeah. memories do you have of meeting him 20 years ago? Well, when I heard he was coming to Hansworth, I just said, right, that's it, I'm not going to work today. Hold my appointments. I'm going to go and see Mandela. Um, I didn't have a ticket to get in, but I had to get in. I had to make sure that I got in, fought my way in, and um, he, he, he shared with us all his vision for a, you know, a non-racial South Africa. 
and then he came and he shook everybody's hand, well, as many as he could. I made sure that I got my hand, <laughs> shake this hand, and it was just brilliant. And that clip that we just saw of you there 20 years ago, you were so euphoric, weren't you? Yes, you've changed a little a bit, bit, but yeah. haven't we all? <laughs> but you were so euphoric. What influence did that meeting have on you and your life? Well, it just made us realise that, you know, sometimes we have issues when we think they're serious issues, but that man spent 27 years in prison and he came out and he, he wasn't vengeful. He just said, you know, we need to get on with peace. And that's, that's what was left with me. And what have people been saying to you today, friends and colleagues, about oh. Mandela? Well, my mum was crying, but she said she was crying, but she's also joyful that he's away from his pain. Um, and, you know, she compared him to Jesus Christ. He's, you know, he's next to Jesus in my eyes. And that's how important he was. Um, people have been ringing up and saying, you know, how, you know that it's, it's joy and it's also sadness. Mm. Joy about the legacy that he left. Because, obviously, as, as black people in this country, we always looked to Africa and America as, as for ideals. And Mandela was just, he was really the tops. And what about that legacy, Shane? How do we all make sure that Mandela's legacy is continued? When we saw, we saw the, uh, the children from, from the Nelson Mandela School in Bob's report, so how do we make sure that they can continue his legacy? It's important that we as olders pass it on, pass on the message and pass on what it was about. Um, the ANC were made up of people from Africa, they were made up of Asians, they were made up of whites, they were, they were across the board and we need to remember that. So they were all fighting for a just cause. You've met, well, you watch Pele play. You also met yeah. Muhammad Ali as well. Yeah. Where, where does uh, Nelson Mandela rank in that pretty impressive trio? Very impressive. I mean, he's, he's right there at the top. I, I wouldn't want to put people on a different levels because at different times you have different interests. But at the time that I met him, he was definitely the top. But in a world of overnight success and celebrity, and Mandela's just a, a world apart, isn't he? He's several worlds apart. Mm -hmm. And I think... Um, the fact that all the celebrities wanted to go and meet him shows how, you know, the esteem that he was held in. Mm. Is it possible for you to sum up in just a few words what the man means to you? To me personally, he, he was just, just brilliant, such an influence on my life and I hope to pass it on to my children and uh, my grand, grandchild now. So, mm. Shane, yes. lovely to meet you. Thank you very much indeed for sharing your memories of meeting Man Nelson Mandela. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Well, books of condolence have been opened across the region, including Coventry Cathedral, where special prayers have been said throughout the day. Our reporter Bob Huckenhall is there for us this evening. Bob, of course, Coventry has a particularly poignant significance, being the city of truth and reconciliation. It does, Mary, and I think that's been felt very keenly by the people here today, judging by the comments they've left in the Book of Condolence. Many people contributing to that book. And joining me now is the very Reverend John Whitcomb, the Dean of Coventry Cathedral. And that peace and reconciliation message you've actually spread from Coventry to South Africa, haven't you? Absolutely. We have an international community of the Cross of Nails with over 160 partners across the world and some dozen or 14 in South Africa, going back actually to the late 50s of people that want to work with us for peace and reconciliation. And as well as those connections with South Africa, you've been commemorating Nelson Mandela here today. What have you actually been doing? Well, we've had uh, the uh, Book of Remembrance and the candle and the photograph both here in the new cathedral and also in the ruins, which is such a, a particularly poignant place for people to come to commit themselves to peace and reconciliation in the world. Lots of people have come in. We've had prayers as well for our regular Friday litany for peace and reconciliation when we've remembered Nelson Mandela and given thanks for his life. Nelson Mandela will be buried a week on Sunday and you will be having your own service here that day, won't you? We will. We want to celebrate his life, an incredible life, um, and we're going to have a great service here in the cathedral with the Bishop of Coventry. We hope lots of different people from churches and from beyond the churches just to celebrate and to make our own commitment to continuing his work for peace and reconciliation in the world. Well, certainly his death has been felt very keenly by many people in Coventry, as I say, judging from the comments left in the Book of Condolence. Bob Hockenhall, thank you. Now, coming up later in the programme...